Dear loving children, welcome to the online class of History, Nationalism in Europe. So in continuation of what we have studied uh, previously, we studied about uh, liberalism, conservatism, okay. Uh, now let us continue with uh, the unification of uh, uh, Germany, Italy and UK. How they formed the nation states. So let us begin our class with uh, uh, the French artist, uh, French artist uh, Frederick Sorio. Let us find out what was his vision of the world. Who was Frederick Sorio? He was a French artist who prepared a series of four prints visualizing his dream of a world made up of a democratic and social republic. In the beginning of the chapter you can see a picture. You can find a picture of a Statue of Liberty and you can find other countries like America, Switzerland, France, Germany followed by Poland, Italy, Ireland all paying homage to Statue of Liberty. So, Frederick Sorio was a French artist who prepared a series of four prints visualizing his dream of a world made up of a democratic social republic. So, it was a, his dream that uh, the world should be made up of a democratic and social republic. And in this you will find uh, people paying, uh, nations are paying uh, homage to Statue of Liberty, uh, the people holding their uh, flags and wearing their uh, uh, costumes of their country and paying homage to Statue of Liberty. On one side you can see the, in the picture, uh, in the beginning of the chapter. Then you can find below you will find the shattered remains of the shattered remains of all monarchy system and above in the picture you can find uh, in the picture you can find from the heaven uh, christ and uh, uh, saints and angels watching which represents the fraternity of the world so let us move on to the next question why did he prepare a series of four prints based on democratic social republic? Why Frederick Sorio prepare a series of four prints? He wanted to depict his utopian vision, where people of the world are grouped as distinct nations, identified through their flags and national costumes, offering homage to the Statue of Liberty. So he wanted to depict, show his utopian vision. Utopia means something uh, which exists, uh, an ideal uh, society which is unlikely to exist. You remember Gandhiji uh, dreamt about a, a Ram Rajya where every uh, village will be uh, self independent. So he wanted to depict his utopian vision you know, uh, where people of the world are grouped as distinct nations identified th through their flags and their national costumes, offering homage to such of liberty. Now let us uh, come to another question, what do you understand by Zolverin? It was a customs union formed at the initiative of Russia and joined by most of the German states. You remember earlier, uh, you know, the commercial class businessmen faced many obstacles uh, in doing trade. There were no uh, uniform weights and measures. There were more number of currencies and uh, the measurement were also varied from place to place. Uh, there was no freedom of markets. So all these were obstacles. So what do you understand by Zolverin? It was a customs union formed at the initiative of Russia and joined by most of the German states. And this union abolished tariff barriers. All kinds of tariff, tariff barriers they abolished. You remember, uh, I told you earlier, a person traveling from Nuremberg to Luxembourg, he had to pay uh, uh, tax at 11 custom barriers, 5% each. 
So this union abolished tariff barriers. It reduced the number of currencies from over 30 to 2. There were 30, more than 30 number of currencies. So the number of currencies were reduced to 2. Describe various uh, stages of the unification of Germany. Let us find out what were the process of unification of Germany. On 18th May 1848, 831 elected representatives gathered to draft a new constitution for Germany headed by monarchy subjected to a parliament. So, 18th May 1848, 831 elected representatives gathered in the St. Paul's Cathedral Church in Frankfurt to draft a new constitution for Germany headed by monarchy subjected to parliament. In other words, they wanted to establish a constitutional monarchy where king will be subjected to the parliament. This liberal initiative for nation building was repressed by monarchy and military forces supported by Jungas of Russia. This initiative was repressed or suppressed by monarchy. They offered the crown to King of Russia and he refused and he joined with other military forces and supported by uh, the Jungas of Russia, the rich land owners of Russia. Jungus. Then Prussia took the leadership uh, under Otto von Bismarck, who was the chief minister of uh, Prussia. So Prussia took the leadership of uh, uniting Germany under the leadership of uh, this man, Otto von Bismarck. He is known as the Iron Man of uh, Germany. He became the architect of this unification process. He fought three wars over seven years with Austria, Denmark and France with the help of army and bureaucracy. So he fought three wars over a period of seven years with Austria, Denmark and France with the help of army and bureaucracy. At the end what happened? Prussia won the war and completed the process of unification of Germany. So Prussia won this war and completed the process of unification of Germany. On January 1871, Prussian King William I was proclaimed as a uh, German Emperor. So by January 1871, Germany became united under the Prussian King William I. So that is the uh, German proce uh, process of unification. Uh, first, they gathered in the St. Paul Church to draft a new constitution. They offered the crown to the king of Russia. He refused. Then uh, the parliament was dissolved. And then Prussia took the leadership of uh, leadership under Otto von Bismarck. So, who became the main architect of this unification of Germany. So, that is how Germany became a united nation. Now, let us move on to the next question. Explain the nation building process of Italy. Italy was divided into seven states. We must understand Germany was divided into 39 states. Italy was divided into seven states of which Sardinia Piedmont was ruled by an Italian princely house. In 1831, Giuseppe Massini formed a secret society called Young Italy and tried to unite Italy but he failed in his attempt. So in 1831, G. Massini, who was an Italian revolutionary, he had tried to unite Italy, but he failed in his attempt. Then, Camillo D. Caver, his full name, Camillo D. Caver, the chief minister of Sardinia, Piedmont, led the movement for unification through a tactful diplomatic alliance with France and succeeded in defeating Austrian forces by 1859. So just like uh, Otto von Bismarck took the leadership of uniting Germany, Kavar, the chief minister of Sardinia, Piedmont, he led the movement for unification through tactful diplomatic alliance. Very tactfully, uh, diplomatically, he uh, had an alliance with France uh, 
Ireland succeeded in defeating Austrian forces by 1859. G. Garibaldi also formed armed volunteers and marched into South Italy and the Kingdom of Two Sicilies to drive out Spanish forces. So, uh, Garibaldi also supported Caver. He also formed an armed volunteers and uh, marched into uh, South Italy and the Kingdom of uh, Two Sicilies to drive out uh, Spanish forces. So, these armed volunteers were also supported by the peasants, the local peasants. So, and they were able to drive out uh, Spanish forces from uh, South Italy and the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. As a result, by 1861, Victor Emmanuel II was proclaimed as the Emperor of United Italy. So, by 1861, who was proclaimed as the Emperor of United Italy? Victor Emmanuel II was proclaimed as the Emperor of United Italy. So, first we saw Italy was divided into uh, seven states. Then how uh, Massini tried to unite Italy uh, with the help of uh, secret societies. But he could not, uh, uh, but he failed, he could not succeed in his mission. Then Caver, the Chief Minister of Sardinia, led the movement for unification through tactful diplomatic alliance with France. And he succeeded in defeating Austrian forces. Then Garibaldi also supported him with the help of his armed volunteers and the support of the local peasants. And uh, and they were able to drive out the Spanish forces from uh, South Italy and the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. So by 1861, Italy was united and Victor Emmanuel was proclaimed as the Emperor of United Italy. Okay. The peasants also struggled under the burden. Now let us come to the next question. Unification of Britain was a long drawn out process. Unification of Britain was a long drawn out process, means uh, it uh, took uh, long years for the unification of uh, Britain or what we call it today UK, United Kingdom. Let us find out how uh, United Kingdom was established. So uh, that is why we say the unification of Britain was a long drawn out process. It, it took uh, so many years for the unification of uh, Britain or for the formation of UK. First point, the English nation consists of English, Welsh, uh, Scot or Scottish or Irish. So the British nation consists of this, this ethnic groups called English, Welsh, uh, Scottish or Irish. No British nation existed prior to 18th century as each group had their own culture and political traditions. There was no British nation uh, before 18th century because each group had their own culture. English had their own culture, Scottish people had their own culture, Irish people had their own culture and their own political traditions. So the next uh, step, uh, in 1688, uh, the English parliament uh, seized uh, power from the monarchy. In 1688 uh, AD, the English parliament uh, took uh, power from the monarchy and established a constitutional monarchy. Constitutional monarchy means uh, the king will be subjected to parliament. In a monarchy system, king is supreme power. In a constitutional monarchy, King is only subjected to parliament. Uh, the real powers are with the parliament. So, 1688 English parliament ceased, took power from the monarchy and established constitutional monarchy. By the act of 1707, Scotland became part of UK. So, an act was passed in 1707 by Britain and as a result, uh, Scotland became part of UK, United Kingdom. The Scottish people were forbidden to speak their Gaelic language. Please note down what was the language of Scottish people. They used to speak a Gaelic language, not English. So the Scottish people were forbidden, forbidden means not allowed to speak their Gaelic language or wear their national dress. And many were forced to leave their country. So. 
many were forced to uh, many uh, scottish people were forced to leave their country migrate from their country so they were not allowed to speak their gaelic language they were not allowed to wear their national dress so that is a, even today we find the scottish people are not very happy uh, by becoming part of uh, uh, uk recently there was a referendum uh, whether scotland want, wanted to be part of uk or not only 48 people supported that the scotland uh, scotland should not be part of uk 52% supported that the scotland should be part of uh, uk so that is a, a problem the scottish people are not very much happy uh, by becoming part of uh, uh, british because british people told you forget about your language you forget about your culture you should speak like uh, english people and uh, and and you are uh, forget about your dress code forget about your language okay and the traditions then what was the next step by the act of 1801 ireland was forcibly incorporated into united kingdom by the act of 1801 by passing an act in 1801 ireland became a part of uk so there was a protest against uh, this one started by one man called wolfton but uh, the protest was suppressed so by the act of 1801 you find ireland was also forcefully uh, incorporated added uh, to the united kingdom so we find uh, why it was called a long drawn out process because the process started in 1688 and unification completed almost 1801 1688 to 1801 and as a result what happened the british flag the national anthem god save our king and the english language were promoted to identify the nation so the british flag union jack the national anthem god save our noble king and the english language were promoted to identify the nation so i hope you have understood uh, how united kingdom was formed how britain became a nation we saw how germany became a nation state we saw how italy became a nation state and we saw how uk became a nation state let us move on to the next question what is an allegory explain with examples what is an allegory in the olden times uh, uh, nations were uh, identified as a female figure so what is an allegory when an abstract idea is expressed through a person or a thing it is called a allegory an abstract idea you know any abstract idea honesty truthfulness okay any abstract idea is expressed through a person or a thing it is called an allegory female figures became an allegory of nation female figures figures became an allegory of nation in france she was christened as mariane a popular name among the christians mary mariane in france she was christened christened means named a uh, naming ceremony in france uh, she was christened as uh, mariane mariane was the allegory of france and uh, in india we have uh, uh, bharat mata as an allegory for uh, india the female figure uh, in france she was christened as mariane now let us find out uh, the other the statues of mariane were erected in public places and mariane images were marked on coins and stamps so how they paid homage to mariane statues of mariane were erected in public places in public places they erected they built the statues of mariane and mariane images were marked on coins and stamps let us find out what was the allegory of germany germania became the allegory of germany germania wears a crown of oak leaves as the german oak stands for heroism so it had a, a symbolic meanings so 
at the end of the book you can find what are the characters and what do they symbolize when you go through the textbook you can understand each one each symbol stands for something okay Oak stands for heroism okay so there are different things the breastplate eagle okay sword ready sword shows readiness to fight so all that when you look at the, the, the that page you can, you can understand so germania became the allegory of germany germania wears a crown of oak leaves as the german oak stands for heroism now let us come to the next question why the period after 1871 was a period of tensions and conflicts in europe the balkans was a region of geographical and ethnic variations so the balkan was a region of uh, uh, geographical and ethnic variations consisting of uh, you know montenegro uh, herzegovina albania uh, there are so many so balkan was a region of uh, geographical and ethnic variations so macedonia herzegovina uh, okay montenegro it consisted of uh, so many groups uh, ethnic groups then the spread of ideas of romantic nationalism in balkans the spread of ideas of romantic nationalism we studied earlier about uh, uh, romanticism the spread of ideas of romantic nationalism in balkans together with the, the disintegration of ottoman empire disintegration means a break up of ottoman empire all these countries were under ottoman empire the ottoman empire began to disintegrate to break up they became uh, uh, they began to break up their power reduced made this region very explosive as a result, a result uh, you know one by one countries became independent we saw earlier how greece became independent the balkans were jealous of each other and they tried to gain more territory at the cost of others that is another problem with the balkans they were jealous of each other and they tried to gain more territory at the cost of others and so that is another reason there were intense rivalry among big european powers like russia germany england and austria hungary over trade and colonies over who is a, a militarily a more, who is more powerful so there were intense rivalry among the european powers rivalry means enmity among the european powers like russia germany england and austria hungary over trade and colonies it was a fight for colonies so they wanted to uh, gain more territory uh, in uh, balkans in other words in simple words we say the big european powers like uh, russia germany england austria and hungary they tried to catch fish in the muddy waters of balkans they made the situation much more worse and this led to a series of wars in the region and finally the first world war in 1914 that is why we say the period from 1871 was a period of tensions and conflicts in europe finally all this kind of uh, inter uh, intense rivalry among this european powers gave rise to the first world war in 1914 the first world war started because of the uh, because of the killing of uh, austrian archduke ferdinand by a serbian so this led to a series of wars in the region and finally the first world war in 1914 so so very important question why uh, the period after 1871 was known as a period of tensions and conflicts or what do you know about uh, uh, why there were uh, uh, tensions in balkans so the answer is the same let us move on to the next question explain the role of women in the nationalist struggle in the world over the years the women played an important role in the uh, in the national struggle women took part in political meetings and demonstrations they took part in political meetings and demonstrations they formed their own political associations they formed their own political associations you know you remember they did not have even on the right to vote so they formed their own political associations they founded some newspapers to spread their opinions they founded established some newspapers despite this 
they were denied the right to vote during the assembly elections during the frankfurt parliament they were admitted as observers to stand in the visitors gallery so that was the role played by women so with that we almost come to the end of uh, this chapter uh, your nationalism in europe uh, uh, we have almost completed i want all the students to write down the questions answers and send it to me through my whatsapp number uh, 9847831642 by uh, the very next day after the class uh, friday we have the class and so by saturday you should send the notes to me all the students should send the notes to me uh, write down your notes in italy i told you to read the uh, textbook uh, two or three times uh, and uh, complete the work study regularly systematically so i wish you all the best